Hi everyone, Liz Klimek here, Planetarium Manager at the South Carolina State Museum. Well, first off, I'd like to say happy fall, everyone. The autumnal equinox was not that long ago on September 22nd, and I hope your fall's off to a good start. So what this means is as we go on into the weeks and months ahead, the days are going to get shorter, the sun's not going to rise as high in the sky, and while that can seem like kind of a downer, there's another way to look at it, which is that the nights are going to get longer, which means more time for stargazing, and the days and nights are going to get cooler, which means more comfortable nights for stargazing. So I hope that you'll have some clear skies in the weeks ahead so that you can take a break from those computer screens and go out and enjoy something real for a change. So let's go ahead and see what the night sky has in store for us over the next couple of weeks. We will start by fast forwarding in time just a little bit to this upcoming Saturday, September 26th at 8.30 p.m. We're looking directly south from Columbia, South Carolina. Now the first thing you'll probably notice if the sky is clear this weekend is our waxing gibbous moon. Now this phase means that the moon is not too far away from being full and I can show you that if I nudge time forward just a little bit, so we're looking at the 27th, looking at the 28th, I'm going to have to pan our view over so we're looking more towards the southeast, go to September 29th, the 30th, and finally to October 1st, where we will have a full moon rising around the time of sunset. But for now, let me dial that back so that we are once again looking at the sky this Saturday, reorient us so we're looking directly south. Right next to our waxing gibbous moon are two bright planets, Jupiter and Saturn. Now, if you watched our last episode, we spent quite a bit of time talking about Jupiter, and I promised that this time we would spend some time talking about Saturn. But before I do that, I do want to quickly point out some star patterns that you can also go out and look for in addition to the moon and these two planets. Right over here we have something that looks like a big giant J or maybe a hook or a ladle dipping into the earth. And this is going to be Scorpius the Scorpion, which kind of looks something like this and right next to the scorpion we have Sagittarius the Archer. And if you just look at the brighter stars in this constellation, a lot of people see a teapot or a kettle in there. But here is our Archer. And if you've been watching these virtual sky tours over the course of the summer, you'll be very familiar with these star patterns. And if so, notice how they're drifting more towards the southwest, such that our big giant J here is about to start to disappear. It's about to start to disappear as those stars are going to sink into the western horizon. So we're going to have new fall star patterns start to rise towards the east, and we'll take a look at some of those in the next episode. Now if I tilt our view so that we're looking more upwards. There is a large triangle high overhead made of three very bright stars. This is called the Summer Triangle, and despite our moon there throwing a lot of extra light up into the sky, this triangle should still be very noticeable because the stars are just fairly bright. So I'll pan back down here so we're looking towards the south and now as promised let's go take a closer look at Saturn. I can zoom up on it and show you what it might look like in a small telescope. If you do ever have the opportunity to look at Saturn in a small telescope it'll look like a disk and you can see the rings that go around it. Sometimes you might see a point of light or two off to the side and that could be one of its 
brighter moons, just depending on what your view is. Now I can give us an even better view of Saturn. I can show you what it's like to actually be in orbit around Saturn. So here we go. This is our little field trip out to the ringed planet. Now, as I said in the last episode, Jupiter and Saturn are very similar. They're both gas giants. That just means there's no solid surface to stand on. There's no solid ground. They both have rings. They both have dozens and dozens of moons. The count just keeps going up all the time. They both have wild weather. So what makes them different? Well, speaking of wild weather, Saturn also is a very stormy place. But unlike Jupiter, the storms don't show up as well in the atmosphere. So if you ever look at Jupiter, you can see these cloud bands that are um, orangish, brownish stripes going across the planet. They're unmistakable. They're very dramatic and they really stand out against the rest of the planet. And sometimes there's a giant hurricane-like storm called a Great Red Spot, which rotates into view. And again, it's just unmistakable. It just pops out and you can't not see it. But if you look at Saturn, it almost looks serene. And in our zoomed up view here, you can, you can get a sense of the bands going around, but they're not as dramatic as they are on Jupiter. But the wind speeds on Saturn can get up to a thousand miles per hour and there are some pretty big persistent storms. I can show you a couple of notable examples. So I'll first show you something that was dubbed the dragon storm on Saturn. Now I have stared at this picture many many times and I cannot see a dragon in there. I really want to. I think it's a really cool name for a storm but I don't see a dragon. Maybe you see a dragon in there somewhere above those, uh, those bands in that bright spot. Then there was a storm that was just called the Great Northern Storm on Saturn, where it basically gave Saturn a different kind of ring. The storm basically wrapped all the way around the planet at about 30 degrees north latitude. So that is something you don't see every day. But like I said, not as immediately noticeable on Saturn in general. Let's just continue to float around Saturn here and admire it while we talk a little bit more about it. So what does stand out around Saturn are these beautiful rings. Now Jupiter also has rings, but they're made of dark dust particles, whereas Saturn's rings here are made of larger chunks of rock and ice, a lot of water ice, which is very reflective. So when you look at Saturn's, Saturn's rings, you're seeing basically debris just going around and around Saturn. There are actually lots of lots of rings. There are these ringlets here. There are these gaps in here as well. And your eye can't distinguish between all of the little chunks. So we see them all together and it looks like this path going around the planet. I always like to say it looks as if you could take a stroll on it or drive on it with a space buggy. But if you were to get really, really close to these rings, you would see that they're made of individual pieces of of uh, rock and ice. And we actually sent a spacecraft diving through these rings at one point in time. It was called the Cassini spacecraft. And I don't know if you've heard of it. Unfortunately, just like the Juno spacecraft, which is in orbit currently around Jupiter, I really feel like Cassini never got a lot of great press. So I seldom run into anyone who has heard of Cassini, but Cassini did orbit Saturn for 13 whole years, took almost half a million images of Saturn, its ring system, and many of its dozens of moons. So be sure to check those out on various NASA sites. You can peruse those for days, weeks, maybe even years. And the Cassini mission ended in actually September of 
2017, so not that long ago. So this is another difference between Saturn and Jupiter. Jupiter currently has a spacecraft in orbit around it, as I said, called Juno, but Saturn does not. But they both have dozens and dozens of natural satellites, as I said earlier. Well, it's time for us to leave Saturn behind here, and I'll go back to our Earth-based view, then zoom back out of that so we can see Saturn up in the sky. But I hope this gives you more of an appreciation of what you're actually looking at when you look at that bright point of light up there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this field trip to Saturn, and I hope this gets you excited about doing some planet, moon, or stargazing over the next couple of weeks. And thank you so much for joining me here today. If you liked what you saw, be sure to like and subscribe below. Don't forget that the planetarium is open at the State Museum. You can always check out our show schedule at scmuseum.org to see what we currently have to offer. And as always, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I hope to see you again in the next episode.